Hello, and welcome to the Talent Integration Cloud Welcome Video Series. This is Part 7, Developing and Publishing with Talent Studio. We've just completed a general walkthrough of the Talent Studio. Now, let's discuss developing and publishing the actions. Let's get started. Let's capture the big picture regarding basic composition of an integration action. It's a matter of providing certain action input and or output components, depending on the type of action you're building, identifying a reject schema to define what data is rejected from the action, as well as including a logging component and defining connections and parameters. There are different types of actions or integration functionality types used in conjunction for different purposes. There's a source, process step, propagate step, target, or job type. The type of components from the action components within the job or action itself really defines what type of action it's going to be. You can see that the source type only involves using an output action within the component stream. The process step and propagate step involve both input and output actions. We'll discuss the difference between these two in later videos. The target type involves an input action and the job type involves neither inputs nor outputs. Now that we've grasped the big picture and broken down the type of actions, let's build a new job to publish. In this case, we're going to build a propagate step action. First, I need to click on the create icon in the upper navigation bar and select create job from the drop down. Make sure that the correct folder is highlighted. The default works for me. And then click OK. I must provide a memorable name for my new job, as well as enter the purpose and description. This information is simply meant to add more metadata about the job, including inputs and outputs for best practices. This info will be displayed in the web UI as additional comments for the actions. They aren't required fields, but we are highly advised to fill them in with as much information as possible. Click Finish. Now that my new empty job is ready, I can add some components. I can utilize the 800 plus components list located within the collapsible right panel, the palette. Simply click on the desired folder, for example, the Talent Cloud folder, select Actions, then I can drag the actions or components from that folder into my job within the design window. Within the component tab below, while the action is highlighted above, I can then select the edit schema ellipses to modify and or add something to the schema. I can click the green plus sign to add as many as I like. I can adjust the additional title accordingly, for example, tile underscore content. I'll select the appropriate type, and click OK. This action will take in a file object. If I'm using one of the actions from the exchange that reads files from a file sharing service, like box.com or Dropbox or the Amazon S3 file system, I can then pass it into this action as a file object. And if I have more than one file object I want to iterate over those files, I can right click into the white space within the design window and begin typing words tied to components I want. For example, iterate. I'll select the component I want from the list that displays, and it's brought into my design window. I'll right click and select rows main, and click on the next component to connect the two and build the flow of the job. So I'm passing the file into this component, which will then go over how many files there are and do the following actions. I now have to set up the metadata for the files involved in this component. I have an existing Excel spreadsheet with data ready to be integrated into my job. In the metadata folder within the repository, Talent has many different wizards available to help set up the metadata for many of the supported source and target metadata objects. Let's create a new file connection. Right click on your desired wizard from the metadata folder list. I'm going to select Create File Excel to create a new Excel file connection. Step one, I'll fill in the available fields with as much information as possible, including a name, purpose, and description. Step two, I'll locate and select the file I want from within the browser window, and then select to view all sheets. 
step three, it's going to use standard Excel processing. So I'll check set heading row at column names, since the first row in this particular file includes the headings. And finally, step four, I'll review my information, adjust the type if necessary, and then click finish. The file now appears in my metadata folder list within the repository. I can drag and drop the file into my design window. I'll select from the pop-up whether it's an input or an output. In this case, it's an input for a file coming into the process, and I'll click OK. Now this process is designed to iterate over my input files, passing them to this new component, which will apply the schema we just defined and convert the file objects into rows and columns of data for processing. I just need to right click over the flow to iterate component within the design window, highlight row and select iterate and connect the arrow to the new Excel component. The metadata for this Excel component is pointing at the exact file that I used to define the component, which is located on my desktop. However, because this action will be executed in the cloud, I need to specify the file will be coming from the previous component, the flow to iterate component, rather than from my desktop. To adjust this, click on the ellipses besides the file name stream field. Edit the parameters using the repository pop-up and select Change to Built-in Property, and click OK. Delete the existing file name stream pre-populated field info. Now it gets a little tricky here. While the box is highlighted, click Control Spacebar, start typing tflow, as I want to find the output coming from the tflow component, and select the file content. Once I've selected this, the studio will input the syntax in for me. So now I have the action reading the file coming in and then mapping it into the schema which was defined in the metadata process with the wizard. Finally, I will add the action output content. Right click on the Excel component, highlight row, and select main. Connect the two components. Now within the action output component tab settings, select the edit schema ellipses. I can see it now inherits the schema of the file that's being passed through. Now let's review this job step by step. When looking at the input action schema, it contains one column of type object, which means it's accepting a file and iterating over the file or files being passed through the action. It will read each file and then map its content to the defined schema. I can see the schema that was developed from the wizard by clicking on the Edit Schema Ellipses, selecting View Schema from the Options list, and then clicking OK. That schema will be passed out to the next action using the T-Action output. To make this job complete, I should include our Reject Action component to capture any data that doesn't map to our schema as well well as our standard logging components for capturing logging events, warnings, and any errors. These components are not necessary for the flow to execute, but they are a best practice and will certainly be helpful when the job is executed in the cloud. Now that I've created this job, I can publish it to the integration cloud. Before I publish this job to the cloud, I need to make sure my configurations and username and password for my studio are set up correctly. Click Window from the Studio's main navigation toolbar and select Preferences. Within the Preference window, select the Talon drop-down from the list and then highlight Integration Cloud. Enter the same username and password used to log into the web UI. Select the Advanced options if it is unchecked. The automatic settings for the service URL should be the standard setting for all users and I shouldn't have to touch it. Test the connection using the Test Connection button. Service Available text will display in green once the test is run, if the connection is good and I can successfully publish to the Talent Integration Cloud. Within the repository, I must locate the job. Click on the file, and from the drop-down select Publish to Cloud. Enter the publishing detail information. In this instance, I want to publish to the personal workspace. I'll include export action sources and export action screenshots so I can see them in the cloud once it's published. 
Click Finish. The studio is now publishing all metadata and definitions of this action into the Talon Cloud. Now that it is successfully published, I'm going to view the new action in the Talon Integration Cloud. I've logged into the Talon Integration Cloud, and I need to go to the Manage tab, and then my Personal Actions. I'll select my new actions. Within the New Actions page, I can see the metadata, a visual demonstration, a screenshot of my action, basic info about where the action is built, and some inputs and outputs of the schema. Now I can take advantage of this particular action within the flow within my job. Thank you very much for watching this video on developing and publishing with Talon Studio. Many of these concepts and more can be found in the Talon Online Help. Your next step is to watch the video in this series entitled, What's Next? Thank you very much.